What is up, nerds? The one of nerd here, and welcome back to Attack on March Madness, part four. Yes, part four. So day four of the Attack on March Madness, inspired by the Attack on Titan uh, series, uh, talking about season three. Since season four is already out, and it's it is its final season, so. Again, I decided to make Attack on March Madness the overview of the third season. So that way, uh, those of you who haven't watched season four yet, like myself, can be uh, caught up and reviewed and remembered what happened uh, in that previous season. Uh, Last episode, um, we talked about uh, King Rice. He turned into this humongous uh, titan. And was heading to the uh, Orvu district, a district that does not have any type of Titan activity. So if one ever were to come up, even a small one, they would have had a hard time uh, trying to dispose of it because they have no experience uh, in that area. So, yeah, when that came, um, they really didn't have <laughs> they didn't really didn't have anything but uh, the scouts there. Um to help uh, defeat it. So they did. And it was a historia who dealt the final blow to her father and saw like some memories and stuff uh, from her father, you know, discussing to his father about, you know, why they couldn't undo the King's will or whatever. Why can't they stop, you know, the Titans to get rid of them or whatever and all that good stuff. So she didn't really, we assume that she didn't bring that up to any of the, you know, higher ups because it's not mentioned uh, later on. So moving on into the, uh, the 10th episode, uh, mainly a background or flashback story between, uh, Kenny and Uri. Again, Uri is the older brother of rice King rice. He was the one to inherit the Titan ability, Uh, from their father um they have a weird meeting where their friendship becomes or starts from a weird place kenny was hired to kill him was was hired to kill uri um we don't know exactly who it was but they surmised that it was somebody from the from the interior that they knew they knew things about uh the royal family and the stuff with the titans and if they were dead then who knows what would happen next? We we don't know because the ambush was bombarded by Uri. And uh, it seemed that he was going to kill Kenny. And he was pleading. Kenny was pleading for his life. Like, come on, man. You know, you know don't, don't kill me. You know, are you really are you really the true king? And, you know, the fake king that we got going on isn't the real king or whatever. And, you know, if you let me go, I'll kill you right this time. You know, make sure, you know, it'll be nice and easy real quick. Like. So yeah, he was he was pretty much begging for his life then because he didn't have any up until that point. Um, he was good at what he did. Nobody was ever able to uh, corner him like Uri did. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much how their their friendship started. Um, Uri told Kenny to you know kill the man that hired you to kill me. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how that started, and that's how Kenny uh, Kenny <laughs> that's how Kenny. Uh, became you know close close friends or with the in craft with their interior police and all the dirty work uh, that he did because before he was killing uh, all the interior police and mps so yeah that was that was fun um another thing uh uri talks to kenny about you know life and to get his viewpoint on it and all that stuff and it seemed like this was a conversation they always had because they could never agree on their different viewpoints but they were still friends you know regardless so i felt that they that was kind of um important to see especially in these uh in these times here um so after after that 
it goes a little bit more into Kenny and Levi. Um, Kenny is because Kenny is found, uh, you know, almost a dead after a King Rice turned into a Titan and he had that whole the underground cave collapsed. So Kenny elites, his whole squad, you know, died and he was the only one left. And Levi found him. And, you know, Levi was asking him, you know, so what you doing? And he goes into a little story about, you know, how they met and stuff. And Levi wanted to ask him, why did he leave him? You know, why they was living underground. And Kenny was like, you know, I felt that I taught you everything that you needed to know to survive. And I wasn't cut out to be somebody daddy. So, yeah. And that's when he told him, you know, he was his uncle and not his dad. Because he wanted to know who he leave i wanted to know what kenny was to him or to his mom and kenny was probably thinking like dude i'm not your daddy i'm your uncle <laughs> that's it. like that's all that is but still he was like hey i'm not i'm not cut out to be a father so or any type of you know father figure so i'm not even going to try to i'm not even going to try to to see if it'll work out so yep kenny ends up uh, dying passes over um, and I do kind of, I kind of like his, his, uh, I wouldn't call it an arc cause he didn't really like change like his, uh, his disposition, but it was more so on why he was doing what he did. I kind of, I kind of liked that and he did it in his own way. Cause he talked about every, everybody has their own type of sin, whether it be, you know, women drugs money um becoming something that you know they want to be so bad or whatever and for kenny it was you know power it was power because during the flashback with um uri he was wondering like if anybody possessed the power that he has will they become you know omnipotent will they be would they would their life or behavior be forever changed into you know something of peace and that's what he wanted and i felt that to be kind of interesting on why he wanted power uh, not to you know to control others or to destroy things but to become you know this higher being that didn't have to worry about what he used to worry about, you know, living underground, living day to day. He can just, he would have the expense of living life as a, uh, what I guess a carefree person or whatever, you know, being able to change, not being that, you know, Kenny, the Ripper that he used to be, he, he cause he wanted to, he, he didn't want to be that way. He just, it, he just, he had to because of where he was living and he wanted to change it. So I thought that was pretty interesting to, uh, to know about him. That was pretty surprising. Um, other than that, um, we go into, uh, Rhina and Bertolt. We see them again and he, Rhina specifically, he's laid out in his Titan form, armor Titan form. Seemed like he had a fight. He had like two holes pierced in him through his armor. And it seemed that him and the Beast Titan, you know, the big, the big eight that we see in the second. Yeah. He makes his first appearance in the second season of Attack on Titan. Uh, them two had a fight. And it seemed that it was about whether they were to continue to plan on to capture Aaron or to go and save uh, Annie. I'm pretty sure uh, this probably came up because of Berto. He, because we know he has a thing for Annie, and what Armin uh, said to him last time really shook him. So they was like, "Yo, we gotta let's go save Annie first, real quick. Then we can continue with the plan." And the Beast Titan was like, "No, we're sticking with the plan." And I guess they had a disagreement, and they was like, "Okay, we're gonna have a fight. If you win, we go save Annie first. But if I win, we stick to the plan." And the beast titan won <laughs> so they stick to the plan on getting the coordinate what they call it again the power to control all titans that uh, aaron has now in his possession 
So uh, we will soon see what uh, that plan is. But with episode 11, that's another type of uh, backstory where it's about a Commandant Shadis. And the reason why we're talking about him is because Aaron, he finally remembered who this man was that was in front of his father when he was having uh, those visions or memories uh, flashing before him when uh, King Rice and Historia activated him when they uh, touched him. And he was trying to figure out who that was for so long and he finally figured out who it was. So him and the other uh, scouts headed toward them or headed toward him back to the old stomping grounds of boot camp to see if he had any information that could help, um, you know, with the Titans whatsoever. And uh, he didn't. He assumed or already knew that Aaron was going to come see him eventually. So he was like, I don't I don't have any type of information that can help you in, you know, fighting the Titans or get rid of them. But I will give you, you know, a backstory of, you know, a bystander and that bystander being me. So he talks about how he met Aaron father for the first time, Grisha. He was uh, wandering outside the walls, uh, seemed to have had no memory of himself or what he did previously. So he took him in and, you know, started telling him about this, this settlement. That's what I'm gonna call it. Settlement. I'm gonna either call it a settlement or a kingdom that they're living in. Uh, started talking about the, uh, this settlement settlement that they're living in and about, you know, what he does, uh, being a, a scout. So that's the first time Grisha learns about, you know, what a scout is and what they do. And he was telling him, he was, Grisha was asking him like, so you're not afraid of the Titans. You're not, you know, you know, scared of what they can do. And Grisha was like, like, no, like, this is the whole point of being a scout. You know, we're tired of being, you know, cattle locked up in a pen, just waiting to be eaten. Cause that's, what's going to happen eventually if we don't do anything. And Grisha pretty much praised him for that, you know, was telling him that scouts who are like that are, you know, special kind of people because even though they don't have the power like the Titans do, they're still able to stand up and fight knowing that it can be a losing battle, but they still go up and fight. And Grisha really appreciated that. And that kind of made uh shot ass feel some type of way, you know, inflated his ego a whole lot. But, um, behind the scenes uh, stuff was happening uh, kind of differently um Grisha he ends up marrying you know who is now Aaron's mom but through this flashback you can kind of tell Shadis had a thing for Aaron's mom Aaron's mom used to be a waiter or waitress at this bar and you can tell they had a history and he visit he visited that bar frequently and would talk to her because they knew each other uh, very well. And he he saw it as well. It was during a time when she caught the uh, flu or something or the plague, I believe it was. It was some disease that uh, she had caught and shot us brought her in. And he was like, you know, come on, save a Grisha because Grisha is a doctor. And he wanted him uh, the saver. And she does something extra, like she grabs him, like grabs Grisha by the arm, you know, how like a, a woman with, you know, affection towards a man would. Grabbed her by her arm, I was like, you know, my parents caught it too, please save them, please do the best you can. And then he saw Grisha, not Grisha, but shot as he saw that, you know, physical interaction going on there. He was like, so, okay, all right, I see this. Um, but... He, he he just started, you know, doing him. He ended up becoming the commander or captain of the survey corps. So that's the position that Irvin is. or Yeah, Irvin is in season three. Grisha and Aaron's mom, they get married. So even though Shadez is getting to the position where he wanted to, to, to show that he can do better than his predecessors, the other thing that he wanted was also, you know, being taken away. So he was kind of feeling <laughs> feeling salty about that a little bit. And after their last mission, which was a failure, um, he sees Aaron's mom. I don't, I'm going to just keep calling her Aaron's mom because I don't remember what her name is. But he, he sees her or she recognizes him, I should say, and was 
like making small talk. And uh, by this time, she was uh, she already had Aaron because she had Aaron with her while she saw a shot as making small talk and was like, so, you know, when are you going to stop doing this here? Don't you think that this is, you know, stupid of you to do? And that triggered him hard. And he he pretty much he fussed her out, pretty much called her uh, a hoe and <laughs> She didn't deny it. She didn't deny anything that he was uh, telling her off about. She tried to take the negativity that he said and say, it's okay to be this way. Or it's okay if you're not special, I should say. Being not special is, is a part of being special. Or something she was saying. It was To, to me personally, I didn't buy it. I wasn't buying it. I'm like, okay, whatever. Because she was talking about uh, Aaron while he was still a baby like it doesn't matter if he's you know special or not or the best at anything you know just look at him he's so cute and i'm like that's something uh that's something that they was they would say <laughs> i'm like that doesn't that's not a good argument but okay that's whatever but uh in the end of this storytelling that shadis was telling the current survey corps he told aaron that his mom said something else and i forget what that was i don't remember but it ended up giving aaron you know a bit more confidence in what he'd been trying to do all along which was trying to control this titan power uh, because in the beginning if you remember season one when he first was training to become you know a scout and he was testing out the odm gear he couldn't get it for whatever reason and he found out shot has found out that the equipment that he was using was rigged and during his storytelling we find out who rigged it it was shot as himself because he didn't want Aaron to follow down the same path that he did because of what his father had put on to him he didn't want Aaron to be another victim of his father so he was trying his hardest to make you know Aaron fail so I thought that was kind of interesting yeah that was pretty much that was pretty much uh, that for episode 11. So 10, 11 was a lot of backstories. So when we go into the last episode of part one for season three, this was pretty much about a last preparation preparations on the plan on taking the wall back in Shiganshina. So they figured there they will meet Aaron Reiner. Uh, no, not Aaron. Aaron is going there. <laughs> Aaron and them will meet Reiner, Bertolt, and the Beast Titan. So they got to formulate some kind of plan to uh, take back the wall and to address any kind of problems that may come up uh, from the opposition. So uh, this one didn't really have any type of you know, interesting part in it except for a fight that Aaron and Jean had uh, like they always do. Uh, Sasha, she almost bit John finger off because this was their first time in forever having meat. So they had a big feast before uh, their their big day, which is something they haven't had in a long time, if at all. And so the day after, uh, they you know they set their sights on you know going to Shigashina, getting that wall back, and we see already already at the spot is Reiner and Berto sitting on top of the wall and they just staring out in the distance from where, you know, Aaron and the crew will be coming from just waiting. And like the day's the day they're coming. We got to do what we got to do to get back home. So no matter what it takes and it just fades to black. And that is the end of part one of season three for attack on Titan. So, yeah in the next one next next few episodes will be the battle uh for shigatina and it's gonna be it's gonna be a brutal one and you guys will figure out what that is in the next video of attack on march madness so with that being said um again that's gonna be the end of this video if you haven't seen any of the other ones there'll be a playlist at the end uh, for it so you can watch the other uh, three episodes i will also have another playlist up for my super march madness uh, that i did last year 
about uh, Dragon Ball Super and my top six things around the Dragon Ball Super timeline that had happened, in my opinion. So you can check that out as well. There's really nothing else I have to say oh, for today, not for this video. Maybe in the next one, I'll have something more to say. But that'll be it for uh, this video. You guys know what to do if you enjoyed it. Like, share, subscribe. Get this out there to all the nerds in the universe, multiverse, and alternate dimensions. And I will see you in the next one. The Immortal Nerd, signing off.